Okay, everybody, welcome back. Episode 86. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, things like that. Okay. Um, hi, guys. I'm Melanie Edwards. Um, I just graduated from Bowling Green State University, and I have two degrees in marine biology and ecology conservation. Yeah, and you scuba dive right now and things like that. I and do. So get into that. Like you said you were in the water earlier today. What were you doing? <laughs> well, actually, I didn't even tell you this. I just started a new scuba job where I clean the bottoms of boats, which I promise is semi more exciting than it sounds. It's actually not, um, but it's really fun. So <laughs> I love, I'm fascinated with the water. Like I don't, I don't, I mean, I live in Portland, which is pretty close to the coast, but I grew up in Vegas, so I oh, wasn't okay. that close to the coast, but my sister lives down in like San Marco, San Diego area. So I go down there once a year, twice a year nice. and, go, and go to the beach and stuff. But yeah, I've always wanted to scuba dive. And I just feel like there's, it's so like, it's so easy once like you have someone like to help you learn it, but it's absolutely also so difficult. Like, and it, it, it kind of like reminds me of like, like sc uh, skydiving, like not as scary, but like, you still got to be like aware of everything that can yeah, go Yeah. Yeah. Like that. So what um, do you do on this job? Like you, like. So normally my stuff? normal scuba job. Um, so I'll help out with like open water certifications. Um, have you ever heard of hookah dives before? Most people don't know what no, those I are. No, I have not. What is okay, that? Okay, so they're, they're called hookah dives because it literally looks like the hookah you smoke, but it's with scuba diving. So you don't have to have a certification for it, but it's just like a really long like breathing tube and you give them to like just anybody who shows up and they can try quote unquote scuba diving. Um, but I would say 85% of people fail horribly. So they pay like the 100, 200 bucks and they realize they absolutely hate it. Um, so that's exciting. A lot of what I do is saving tourists that like freak out in like four feet of water <laughs> and take them back to shore. That's like, that's about half of it at this point, honestly. Is the freak out most like, is just like not being able to control like where you're at and like having- Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Yeah. I it's just like, really oh, no no you're good no, you're <laughs> no good. it's really it's hard for people to wrap their brain around just breathing underwater mm -hmm. so what we tell everybody is your regulator is what you're breathing out of mm -hmm. we tell them if you ever get in like a stressful situation just keep breathing out of that what everybody does is they take it out of their mouth and they just chuck it <laughs> and they're like i cannot swim and they freak out so yeah what is yeah. like the the protocol for breathing underwater like how are you supposed to do it what is like like what is the technique I mean, if you're just doing the hookah, truth be told, we'll just hand you the regulator and we'll, you just, I mean, not much to it. You just breathe. <laughs> I feel like the only thing I've heard about scuba diving is that you have to like, if you're going deep, this is like deep scuba. Okay. You have to like acclimate so that you don't get like air bubbles inside of your blood vessels or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, so we tell people to, the biggest issues we have. So like, you know, when you're going up in an airplane and your ears start hurting and they pop. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as you're going down in the water. So we'll have people, it's called equalizing. We'll hold your nose, blow air, and then you're good. And you do that every few feet. But so, I mean, what I always tell people, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. But mm -hmm. the only like thing that can absolutely kill you, <laughs> like anybody could do this. If you're down like maybe 30, 40 feet and you hold your breath at the bottom and then you swim to the surface like as fast as you can while you hold your breath, you're just dead. <laughs> like you're done. <laughs> why is that? Like why oh, do your you lungs die? will explode? Uh, they'll just explode? Yeah. <laughs> you're That's done. <laughs> insane. Is it so you have to like breathe out as you come up slowly? Yes. And it's it's not what most people would think. It's um you tell people to deflate. It's um I call it your BCD. Mm -hmm. Um as you swim up. And to a lot of people that doesn't make sense because like why would you deflate to go up? Um so they forget that. But yeah, you never want to inflate as you're going up and like with you you were talking about like the bubbles in your blood or whatever mm -hmm. um so we do something called a safety stop so like halfway up we'll just sit for three minutes and that lets the nitrogen kind of like dissipate through your blood yeah so you don't get the bends and yeah that's also a nasty thing so i my my girlfriend's like mom and husband not her, like kind of her stepdad but like they got married after my girlfriend was like an adult kind of mm -hmm. they uh they do IVs. That's like kind of their job. They do like, they do IVs. You know what IVs are, right? Obviously they're, yeah. Yeah. So they do mobile yeah. IVs to a lot of people. And so when I had COVID, cause I had COVID, 
Um, I didn't have symptoms, but I had COVID. Um, they gave us IVs and mm -hmm. I'm so afraid of needles. Like I, like it's really? like I'm, I'm, I'm a wuss when it comes to needles. I can't take them. And, but I just don't like seeing something go in my body, but they always tell you like, if the, when the IV runs out, like the air will never go into your body because your blood pressure is higher than the, the pressure of the water flowing through. So like, yeah. Little air bubbles going. It doesn't matter. But every time, cause like what happens if, if it runs out and you don't stop it, your blood will start going back in, like into the IV and it, Ugh, God. cause you're going to see a little bit of blood, but every time I see it, I freak out. I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't, I can't see my blood, but back to, sorry for the digression, but back to, the, I, back to the uh, scuba diving and everything like that. Mm -hmm. What freaks me about out about the ocean, not only do we not know, like we only know like 10% or 15% of all the species, right? More? We know more. A little bit more, quite a bit more, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And, but also like, there's like, so there's one pressure gauge difference in like outer space and there's like a bunch in, in like the pressure as you get lower and lower into the water. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's scary. That's like, yeah. And like the way they make submarines, like I, if I was stuck in a submarine in the bottom of the ocean, I'd freak the fuck out. Like I'd rather be in space than under the ocean. Yeah. Actually, could I go on a tangent really quick? You can go on whatever you want. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, you know, commercial diving, yes. anything about that? Okay. So I may get the numbers a little bit off here, but I was talking with my friend who does that and he goes down like 200 feet, 300 feet. Mm -hmm. um, and they do that with that um, air hose that I was talking about. So this is the most terrifying thing I've ever heard in my life. So they'll be down there and it's pitch black. They're doing their work, whatever. And you know, manta rays. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Okay. So those massive rays, yeah. they think that the air hoses are like squid. So they'll come by and just chomp it, rip it out of your mouth. And then when your air, you have an air tank on you, but when you're down that deep, it only lasts for like eight seconds. So you turn your air on, you say deuces, it's been real. And then you're just dead. <laughs> Isn't and that, that happens like all the time? I mean, not all the time, but it's not like more frequent than it of. should. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like, even with like hunters and things like that, when you have these, like the only time people like truly feel like an animal on the planet is when mm -hmm. they're, when they're placed in situations where there's like a real apex predator, like inside, yeah. like, and you don't have any weapons. Cause like you can substantiate, you can like deal with bears and deal with mountain lions. So if you have a gun on you. Just about to talk about. Yeah. But like when you're underwater, like I feel like you don't have weapons just on deck. Mm -mm. Right? No. And no. like the scariest thing too is like, you, you like most of the time you go at the beach when you're just like, or you're scuba diving or swimming, you're probably not going to get attacked by a shark most of the time, but you still could. Like there's still a yeah. probability that like you can just like lose an arm or bleed out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, and it, it is very, very small. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the place where I got my certifications, um, it was in Belize and I did it earlier in 2021. Um, nice. So they've had like thousands and thousands of certifications and there's been one shark attack and this poor woman, it was a thresher shark and this woman had just finished like dentistry school or something. So, you know, you need your hands, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this thresher shark comes and like, oh my gosh, completely screwed up her right arm. Like she had no hand function anymore. And like... Yeah, so there went her career. Not to like freak people out. This happens. You're so much more likely to get like crushed by your refrigerator than you mm. ever are <laughs> to be attacked by a shark. But yeah, that was yeah. the one story. It's like the. Uh, it, can you like move the camera down because you're like kind of fading oh, up? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. Uh, <laughs> it's like the thing. It's like you're more likely to die in a car accident than a plane crash. But everyone's scared of dying in a plane crash, right? So there, I talked yeah. to this dude. His name's Phil Webley, right? And he does like extreme sport. Like he's a, he's a skydiver Ugh. and he, uh, but he does it for like sport and stuff. And so it's like secondhand nature to him. And I was like, how do you deal with like, cause like when you're, when you're playing a sport, like you're thinking of a sport, I was thinking about basketball and you get in those super mm -hmm. high like pressure situations. Um, how do you de like you, you deal with it? Like, because there's no existential threat. You're not going to die if you mess up, but like in yeah. scuba diving, I mean, not scuba diving. <laughs> diving and uh really skydiving though like if you mess up one thing you're dead like for sure so it's like i was like how do you deal with that and he was just telling me like, he's like you just got like first off it's like secondhand nature because i do it so much yeah he's in the, he was in the military and everything but he was like but it's like that makes more fun of doing it and so i feel like for scuba diving 
that existential threat to it. That's part of the fun, right? You get to see a, you get to see animals, you get to see things in, in an environment where like, you're not supposed to be there. Right. Yeah. I mean, as far as the wildlife, like absolutely. But as far as just having like it being dangerous, quote unquote, just to scuba dive, we have a lot of regulations that like, we should be okay. So like, let's say you're a hundred feet under and like you're, you just realize you're completely out of oxygen we have two regulators. So then you'll just, you always have a quote unquote dive buddy that needs to Mm -hmm. be like right next to you. So you'll just like tap on him and he'll give you oxygen and you'll be fine. But as far as the wildlife, like you are right, things can, you know, you don't know. (laughs) Have you had any close encounters with like big animals or, or like sharks or anything like that? We did have one manta ray come up to us in Belize and that was really, really cool. Um, we had a, we thought it was about a six foot great barracuda and those are scary. Those freak me out way more than sharks do. Um, but honestly, the entire time I've been diving in Florida, I haven't seen a single shark. I'm very disappointed. Is, uh, great white or tiger sharks that are more prevalent in Florida? Oh, I don't think great whites are around here at all. Um, I think it's lots of lemon sharks, nurse sharks, um, some tigers, yeah, sand, the sand tigers, but fun fact, also, this spot, um, and I'm in Venice, Florida, this is the number one spot in the entire world for shark teeth hunting, What is whatever reason, you just, the, yeah, they're just, like, everywhere in the sand, it's ridiculous. That's crazy. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, for your job that you're doing right now, what does a usual day look like for you? Um... So when I'm doing both the boat cleaning and the scuba diving, so I'll get up early, I'll do a few boats, which takes maybe like 30 minutes a boat to clean. Um, And then we'll take out people normally off the boat for scuba dives. And that'll be like a three, four hour little adventure. Um, But yeah, I mean, that's about it for the most part. This isn't what I do like for the majority of my, my life, I guess. I just started doing this in, um, November and I'm, I'll be done in like three weeks, actually. <laughs> so what do you do for the majority of your life? Well, I mean, since I graduated, it's all, I've taken on a lot of really random temp jobs because mm-hmm. I'm trying to kind of pinpoint my passion before going to graduate school. Yeah. Um, so I was just accepted as an intern for this project. It's called the Guppy Project and it's in Trinidad. So I'll be heading there. Oh goodness. February 15th. And I'll be living in the jungles of Trinidad for like three months. And I'm really excited. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be really fun. And mm-hmm. I've been this before graduate school, I'm like rushing into good law school. I'm going to law school next year. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot of fun with it. I, I got this okay. experience um, interning at a law firm this summer in Vegas with uh, nice. um, like my best friend's brother-in-law. So that was a lot of fun. And so I'm kind of diving head first into it. But like, it's cool that you're like with marine biology and things like that, because I feel like with a lot of things in grad school, if you're not like really specifically sure what you want to dive into, you can take some time off, right? They tell, oh, absolutely. They tell people to do that with like college and stuff too. Like right after college, you can, you can go back to school. Graduate school and PhD programs are always going to be there. Yeah. So studying marine biology, what's your favorite species? What's your favorite things to study? What is the most fascinating things you've studied? Oh, goodness. Um, so my favorite marine animal is definitely the mimic octopus i might geek out here have you heard of this i have not heard of the (gasps) mimic octopus okay so it's this octopus that hence the name mimics 15 different species to just help evade other predators and it's it's ridiculous it'll imitate like crabs lionfish sea snakes and enemies the whole shebang you have to look up videos of it because i will yeah talking about it on a podcast doesn't do it justice super cool um i'm trying to think here one of my biggest regrets um is definitely going to school for marine biology in ohio so (laughs) poor decision on my part um and that's kind of why i'm taking time to to um try to research other things because all that i did up there was not that this isn't important but it was uh, a lot of algal bloom research um box turtle research Thank here. I did a lot of aging of the scales of largemouth bass. Yeehaw. Um, but yeah, just I wasn't super passionate about what I was doing up there. So I think I'm definitely more 
marine oriented than freshwater. Yeah, I totally um, get that. Yeah, so we'll figure it out. No, yeah, I feel like just like there's so much you can dive into too with being a marine biologist because it's like there's so many different like subspecies of of water animals and there's so many like 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 you say like freshwater versus oceans like mm-hmm. even even like you can like lakes versus rivers like what fascinates me is that like well one like we like there's the world is 97 percent water but you can't drink most of it right it's all salt mm-hmm. water like that but it's like we we really like have not figured out like what's down there and like the in like the Mariana Trench. I mean, there's been, like James Cameron, that guy who did Titanic, was been down yeah. there, like that. <laughs> but it's like really no one goes down there because it's so dangerous. And it's like I feel like as we like we as we study more and more, we're like outer space and and trying to get off the planet with Elon Musk and everything like that. People are like getting rid of like ocean research more and more, and it's kind of sad. I feel like. It is really sad. And it honestly does get me down some days because I, I was looking at a graduate program in Australia and they actually, they kind of try to persuade you not to go into coral sciences because they may yeah. not be here in like 50 to 100 years. And it's, it's really sad. And I hate that we're kind of not to hate on, you know, Elon, but like, I feel like some people are trying to say what's next instead of working on what we could potentially mm. fix like we're already giving up on this and trying to move on to the next thing and i just think it's a really really dangerous mentality yeah i agree i was watching the metaverse like introduction thing from um facebook and mark zuckerberg and first off that mm. dude's a, that's that dude's a robot but second off <laughs> i it, it the way they were talking about it it's like they they just want people to go on into the metaverse. They want people like they want the future for everyone just to wake up and like live in the metaverse, like half, like in reality, half not. And what it was making me think about was like, what, like there must, they must know like the earth is just like almost done. Like they must realize that like we, we are killing the earth and that the only answers to the question are either leaving or like, like, uh, merging with AI and it's kind of scary because I'm like what is it going to look like outside in 25 years as everyone lives like in the metaverse you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah and I mean something I think about a lot is I mean every species has a carrying capacity and I feel like we've already gone way past ours and we're only going to start keep growing infinitely I mean there's just not enough resources so like who knows what's what's it gonna look like in a hundred years like that's terrifying for me yeah they about. sorry they think that um <laughs> pandemics are just gonna keep more wrapping ramping up and up until really yeah Great. Um, bill gates i don't really like bill gates or what he stands for but you know they they were um in like 2015 he was talking about how there was going to be a pandemic in like 2020 and how it's just going to mm-hmm. keep ramping up because of that overpopulation and things like that i don't like the fact that like I, the only thing that I'm like kind of skeptical about is like who gets to decide there's too many people on the earth and like who gets to decide what the answer to that question is. We're going to let these tech yeah. billionaires, these guys who like don't even know like how to speak, like to like connect with other people like Mark Zuckerberg. Like I don't really mm-hmm. think that. But I do yeah. think that I do think that the answer is like on earth, you know, like I feel like if, if people start taking care of like the earth more and more, I feel like we're not there yet to where like everything's gone to shit. I think we're definitely Mm -mm. leaning towards that way, but I feel like, like, you know, there's been mass extinctions a lot of times and the earth has always regenerated, but yeah. And I mean, I hear that argument a lot, but it's the issue with this one now is it's happening. Like, and I mean, I'm pulling this number out of the air, like, 10,000 times faster than it should be happening. Mm. And we're actually starting to see animals go extinct because of the climate. And that hasn't happened before. But be, I mean, because of us changing the climate, if that makes sense. It us causing sense. that issue. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's not completely gone to crap yet. Like, definitely back to the coral reefs, 50% of them are gone. But we are, there's a ton of coral regeneration programs. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get involved with for graduate school. Um, so, like, we are seeing in some ways it's getting better. But, yeah, it's very, very eerie. What does 
the what do these coral regeneration programs like entail? What do they look like? So I haven't personally worked on one yet, but the whole process is called coral fragging. Um, and from my understanding, you kind of break up bigger coral pieces and then I don't know exactly how it works, which is terrible, but then you just put them back in the water and then they grow from there. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, I think that's about it. I might be wrong. But, yeah, it's really uh, sad that the Great Barrier Reef's gone, right? And it's dead, or right? Or... Not all of it, for sure, but it's, it's taken a huge beating. Yeah. But it's still the world's biggest barrier reef. Um, but I was actually, what was cool about Belize, that's the world's second biggest. Um, so it does kind of suck to go from that to the, the icy waters of Florida, yeah. where there's like maybe a crab or two. That's about it, but. <laughs> so like while you've done these dives and while you've been like, maybe you've been researching, what's the coolest thing you've got to see like underwater? Oh goodness. Um, that's a great question. Probably we did see a pretty decent sized squid. We do, um, we do night dives sometimes. And if you're claustrophobic, these are not for you at all. So it's just, you feel like you're floating in space. That's the only way I can compare it to. Um, but we saw probably like a seven foot squid in Belize. Um, and are you familiar with, ah, uh, I changed my answer. Actually, I take it back. Are you familiar with dino flagellates at all? Or like Not bioluminescence? All. Okay. Um, so I don't understand exactly how it works, but down there when you're, when it's pitch black, when it's night in the water, you can kind of like shake your hand through the water and these, this bioluminescence like glows blue in the water and it's the coolest thing ever so that was really really interesting so i don't know if you know anything about peter adia but he's like a no. he's like a performance guy like a like he like he like studies longevity he's like a fascinating okay. dude but he was like an ultra marathon uh, swimmer um for like a long time and he talked about that on joe rogan's podcast. oh really he talked about the bioluminescence because what he would do is he would swim from like catalina island no he would swim from is Catalina off of LA or is Catalina off of San Francisco? Okay. I don't know. He would swim from the coast of California to Catalina Island and back. And he would also swim uh. between the islands of Hawaii. Um, and f- so for most of these swims, you want to start at night at like midnight and then you finish throughout the day. Oh my but God. But he was saying like, you can't see anything. Like you said, he feels like you're floating, but you just, he, like he was talking about all you can see is the bioluminescence of yeah. Uh, of the uh yeah that's that's fascinating and like it's cool that like 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 like, i always find it fascinating like plants and and then and organisms that live inside the the ocean ecosystem is like they have such like cool things that don't need to be um man-made like things like that like Mm -hmm. dark things like that bioluminescence and and they they exist without humans like if if you took all the humans off the world the world would be totally fine and that's the saddest part right Mm mm-hmm I just feel like for like under the ocean, it's like, I mean, yeah, like you see like turtles like getting choked and things by the like six pack uh, uh, like plastic and stuff like that. Yeah. But I feel like most of the ocean, you might disagree with me, but I feel like most of the ocean is probably all right without us anyways, um, like with us, but it's just like we- Oh, it's like screwed up. <laughs> well, have you heard about the trash islands? I have heard about the trash islands. Oh God. It's like bigger than Texas. And now there's another one. There's and another one too. Yeah. So can you imagine that the size is bigger than Texas made up of just garbage floating in the ocean? No, I can't. It's, uh, and I mean, you mentioned the Marianas trench earlier and how we, I mean, we don't know a lot. I mean, I don't know, but <laughs> they actually found a plastic bag at the bottom of the Marianas trench. And I think that's just the most ridiculous thing ever yeah it, i always wondered like i mean maybe it's un like unethical to do but i always wondered like mm-hmm. why we don't just send trash into outer space just like send it out because i feel like it you know i is, that's not a terrible idea it, <laughs> i it probably, don't know <laughs> it probably cost a lot more money and that's the shitty thing is like we do such horrible things to the earth because it costs like not a lot of money but it's like cost benefit analysis death is for the whole planet is worse than sending than money losing money right yeah yeah so giant squid and the bioluminescence what else have you got Mm -hmm. to see while you've done these underwater dives and things like that um so have you seen lionfish before are you familiar with those at all 
I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not very familiar with anything in the water. <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's what this is for. Um, so lionfish are super duper invasive outside of their like native Indo-Pacific waters. Um, and they're so dangerous because nothing, they have no natural predators. Um, so what I was doing down there is I was in the scuba gear. I had my little spear and I would just spear hunt these lionfish for like hours a day. And it was the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. I feel like spear hunting is so hard to do. It's not. Not it's down not. there. You're like, in, everything's in like slow motion. And they're, I don't know, they're kind of stupid. Because like they have no natural predators. So, and they'll hang out in like these big groups. And they'll see their buddies get like speared. And they just like look over and like, huh. And they just stay there. <laughs> so, but no, super fun. I always heard that, what always was like crazy to me is like how people learn like our ancestors, like before, like real like tools and stuff. I mean, I guess like right when they were making tools, everybody, like depending on what the f- resources and, and the animals ate around them, they would always, de- they would develop tools to hunt and to fish right, right around there. I think it's fascinating because I feel like if you dropped like six random people in like different environments, I mean, I guess mm-hmm. that show alone is kind of like that, but I feel like most people would not be able to do to like innovate um, hunting tools like that. And the fact that like somebody was just like, you know what? These bears just like go in and, and, and they fish like that. Like there's a lot of fish right here. There's, there's deer mm-hmm. that might as well make a big stick and just stab the fish. Yeah. Have you gotten, got, well, are you, do you eat meat? That's the first question. Yeah, I do. Okay. So have you gotten to eat any cool sea animals? Like while you do this, are you, are you feel unethical to do that? I, that's part of my 2022 New Year's resolution. So I love seafood way more than I should. So I'm trying to switch to the more. So like, I mean, those lionfish, we eat those like crazy and those are invasive and that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I eat a decent amount of salmon. Um, and that's what I was, I don't think I'd mentioned my stuff in Alaska. That was another little temp job. No. Yeah. Like take a tangent okay, and talk yeah. about that. <laughs> um, so I was working, it's this company called Pizwak and it was out of Anchorage, Alaska or near there. Um, but it was a salmon hatchery. So yeah, I mean, that was, oh my gosh, that was crazy. So that was living remotely in Alaska for two months. Um, that was a trip, but so yeah, I mean, knowing the processes of those more clearly and more just being able to be a part of that, I don't feel as bad about the salmon and they make a huge, huge difference. Um, with that, I do eat, I eat calamari. I shouldn't do that. But yeah, I guess I'm not too bad. I just, I need to practice what I preach a little bit better because the single best thing you can do is not eat meat. Like if you really, really want to help the planet, just don't eat meat and you're going to help a ton. You save so much water. It's ridiculous. But oh, I bet. Yeah, dude. And I, first off, just a little tangent. I can't believe oh, yeah. Flint still doesn't have water, like good water. Like we, like we, like that's been going on since like 2010 and Flint yeah. still doesn't have good water. Yeah. But yeah, I, I yeah, I always thought about that. I feel like when people study animals, I feel like the ethical. I study philosophy. I don't know if you can tell. Um, a little bit, like a little <laughs> bit of the, like it's it, it becomes unethical for them to eat that animal. The only time though, I feel like it becomes super ethical is when, um, is when like there's in, they're invasive species and stuff. Because like, have you heard about like the. I can't remember what deer it is, but in Hawaii and how like there's like 30,000 deer in this one island, small island of Hawaii. And there's seriously, so and there's like, it's like 300 to every one person, 300 deer to every one person that live on oh that Oh my island. God. And so they just send like hunters there to hunt because yeah. like, and, but I'm just like that, like when people like are super against hunting and the, and I'm like, I'm always get, like, I'm always frustrated because I'm like, I understand what you're trying to say, but it's like, first off, we are a part of the, the environment, right? Like, mm-hmm. human, and the way we have like large scale, large scale agriculture and farming is so much more harmful than like hunting with like a bow and arrow. Right. And yeah. So, it's so much more ethical. If you got everyone to hunt their own meat, you'd be so much more ethical than like what everyone eats today. But it's like, then you get to then you can start talking about the capitalism argument and how like you can't poor people just can't go hunt their own food right they don't have the time they don't have the resources to do so and especially and then you have like large cities and stuff like that but i always hate the argument from like especially vegans you get this argument from vegans a lot it's like no one should be eating meat 
hunting is inhumane. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I feel like when there's invasive species that kill off animals when they're not killed, you have to do something about that. And so when you said the lions, lions, what, what are they called? <laughs> The lionfish. The lionfish, yeah. Yes. It's invasive. It's good to fish them and it's good to eat them because it's more humane than just letting them run yeah. around the ecosystem. Right? And I mean, that's the thing too, especially with deer. Like, if you're not hunting them, they're gonna, they could potentially like run into somebody's car. <laughs> I mean, there's in certain parts, there's so many of them, it only yeah makes sense. And I mean, I don't know, especially with, I mean, down in Florida, you got the Burmese python, you have the wild hogs here are crazy invasive. So, no, it's it's really, really strongly encouraged. They actually pay people here to hunt the Burmese python. That's crazy. Yeah, and they get, oh, my God, you get paid per foot because they get huge. So, now that you've seen, like, we've talked about, like, all the disadvantages and things like that of, like, the in- ecosystem and the environment going forward, right? Like, mm-hmm. All the damage that humans are doing. What do you think the biggest disadvantages of being a marine biologist in 2022 is right now? Ugh. So yeah, this is going to be a big tangent. Uh, people in this field, I feel like are absolutely exploited for their passion for trying to help the planet. Um, and it's really, really sad because not everybody can truly afford to go into this career because I've graduated college. I've been on six different research projects. I have a decent amount of experience. And I mean, of course there are things I could be better at, but it's hard to get a paying job like one job that i had to say no to the other day it was a internship with a really really well-known zoo um aza accredited but they offered six hundred dollars a month and they wanted you to work 40 hours a week and that's good (laughs) compared to some things most places just don't even pay you and it's it's really really hard because i mean on my tiktok or whatever i get a lot of like younger people asking me for advice or just saying like, blah, blah, blah. I want to be like you when I grow up. And it's, it's sad because it is really, really hard to make a living off of it. But yeah. So why marine biology? Have you always been interested in it? Was it like a passion from like day one? Yeah. Um, so my uncle was one of the lead scientists that helped bring the pandas back from the brink of extinction. And That's awesome. Yeah. So seeing that as a kid, I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, so yeah. And for me, I was just always more marine biology oriented, but it's always been this for me since day one. So if you get it sure. again, would you still be a marine biologist? Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. If I have to have like, I mean, I say it's hard to make a living off of it and it absolutely is, but I mean, there's, there's things you can do. You can have little side hustles. I sell my exotic plants on Facebook Marketplace, and that's mine. So, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I, I will say, though, that this is the best time to – like, it's not the best time to, for, like, everything going on, but it is the easiest time to make, like, a side hustle, right? Like, you just – Oh, my God. Like, look at all the people making all this money off of NFTs. Do you know anything about NFTs? No. I <laughs> – I feel like I'm qualified because I've had a couple, okay. I've had a good amount of people tell me about what NFTs are on this podcast. So they're basically non fungible tokens. And so what okay. that means is the way I think about it is like, have you or a brother you have or someone you know ever played Fortnite? Yes. Okay. So there's skins on Fortnite, right? And that you buy, people love buying the battle passes. They own something. They own, like, let's say someone's buying the Drake. They make a Drake skin or a Travis Scott skin, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a character you can use. When they buy that, that's buying an NFT. You're buying a digital asset. They're basically just digital assets. And the way they're being used today, for the most part, is from, from artists. Artists are creating digital art. And people are purchasing that digital art. And so what the NFT does, it sends you over the art. Like, yes, you can screenshot or screen record or whatever, but Mm -hmm. the specific NFT has a digital, like, I don't know if it's a barcode or something that is, it basically um, is proof of ownership. It's like the deed of the house or like, you know. And so what it is going to be used for in the future with all this crypto and all this NFTs are like, yeah, artists are going to have them and things like that. But like, think about your passport, right? Like think about mm-hmm. your, it's going to be an NFT one day. You're going to have digital ownership of your passport, of your driver's license. Interesting. It's going to be like that. Or it's going to be like, 
you, you, the deed to your house is probably going to be an NFT. Uh, the um, can't remember what it's called. The title for a car is probably going to be an NFT. It's just really, it's, it's way easier for it to not get um, frauded or for not fraud to not take place. Your, your, your social security is going to be attached to an NFT, but a lot of what it's going to be used for is like in the metaverse and things like that, which I don't necessarily agree with. It's going to be like, you live there basically. Right. So you mm-hmm. can have a house there, you can live in that house, right. You have ownership, you can have buy paintings and, and portray them. So it's basically just like owning something in the digital realm. Like if okay. you imagine, the world, imagine this right here, like imagine everything going on the web, the Xbox online, everything. Imagine that is what a world that people are going to be able to interact with in the future. Cause we already mm-hmm. can on TikTok and Instagram. We yeah. Still, yeah. We already are almost there. It's just going to be more interactive in the future. And so the NFT okay. is like proof of ownership of things in that realm. Interesting. But yeah, off okay. that little <laughs> explanation, what's going on now is people are making so much money buying the digital art and flipping it. Like that's in, they're making Interesting. so much money. Well, part of it too is like, like Tory Lanez produced an NFT with his, I just learned this from CEO. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, he had a NFT part of his uh, album. So if you bought the NFT from the album, you got extra stuff from the album. You got extra songs oh, okay. you don't get and things like that. That's smart to me. And that's why I like yeah. NFL players, soccer players, and things like that are doing it. But yeah, it's like, it's the best time to make money just yeah. like from your house. Dang. Well, something too that I just got involved in like last week, there's this app, it's called Impact. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to obviously be as like, I don't know, environmentally conscious about like investments that I'm trying to make. So this app, if you look up businesses, they will kind of, it helps you. How do I say this? This app. Okay. They have like 13 core values and you say like, what values are really important to you? And then it recommends businesses for you to invest in. I'm like, wow. Cause I don't know what I'm doing at all. And I've just started. So that was helpful. It's always easy. I mean, it's always a good time to start investing. And that's yeah. cool. People are so smart, like with the apps they create. It's it's awesome. Yeah. But it's supply and demand. Like if you need something, chances are a lot of other people need it, right? Yeah. And so like all these hyper creative, that's the only thing that I kind of like, like the only thing that got me thinking about like the metaverse stuff and how I would like use it is mm-hmm. if I could do this podcast in a way where I was like actually sitting with the people, regardless of like hologram or whatever, that'd be dope. Yeah, yeah. I like, create my own studio <laughs> in the metaverse. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's like I have I understand like it's really easy for people, especially if you're like like our age, like mid you're probably mid twenties, right? Or maybe young twenties. Yeah, like I'm twenty three. Yeah, yeah, you're older than me. I'm yeah. about to turn twenty two. Um sure. so like, yeah, it's really easy for us, like, people who didn't have phones when you're in, like, middle school and stuff to be like, yeah, I don't understand it. But then you think about, like, TikTok or Instagram and how, like, a lot of, like, our lives are already online. And all it is yeah. now is, like, all it will be now is, like, you put on a cheap pair of glasses and, like, your world is, like, merged. Yeah. Because, like, I was Damn. watching the video and it was, like, first, like, again, Mark Zuckerberg is a weird-ass dude. <laughs> but it was, like, it was they like, were, like... Yeah they were like hanging out with their friends playing poker and they're like mm-hmm. animators. And then like they FaceTimed and they just answered it. And I was like, okay, it makes sense. Like we already do that with like video games and stuff. And, and all it will be like is, Oh, I want to check Twip TikTok, And you just click it. You're like, you put the glass. Yeah. So I totally understand it. It is freaky though. Right. It's not. It sounds like a black mirror episode. Like... Dude, me and julian dory he's the host of the channel fire podcast i had him on this podcast not too long ago but we talked uh-huh. about like epstein and all this shit going on and like yeah. the metaverse and how the metaverse is like and all this digital stuff is like it it, it is like it's like a dystopian future right yeah and yeah. it's like everyone's wearing masks they, they don't they already like they big tech is using the, the pandemic to keep people away so that, that as soon all they have to do is be like you don't even have to leave your house to hang out with your friends you just put on the glasses <laughs> i mean and so it's like we were talking about how it's, it, it really is a black mirror episode yeah but back yeah. to you and back to my <laughs> biology <laughs> no you're good right. <laughs> i asked you about the disadvantages there's got and you, you kind of got to some what are the uh-huh. advantages of being a marine biologist going forward Ugh. i mean I could not see myself doing anything else because I always wanted to be, 
I mean, I feel like this is one of the most important jobs in the world. I really do. Conservation. I mean, what else, what else is there? That's huge. I just, I couldn't imagine myself doing something that I didn't feel like made a difference in the long run. So that feels really good. I would just, I wake up every day and I'm really, really happy about the job I have. Mm -hmm. Um, And whatever the future holds, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, I guess that's, that's my answer. Well, you can't like shy away from something you really have a desire to do, right? Like you have to, I couldn't ignore this. Yeah. Everyone's got to, everybody's got to like, if you, if you love something, like, like, that's why I'm always like my friend, he's like, he's like pretty big. He makes music. He's like, okay. he's got like millions of listeners on songs and stuff. And, but he like, he's not as big as like, he's not blown up, you know? And yeah. He always tells me, he's like, he's like, I'm going to give it like whatever, one more year, this last year. And then I'm going to go back to college. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're just so close. Like, like you're closer than most people that give up. I'm like, you're yeah. so close. And like, like you sitting at a desk would like, you would hate that. And, like, we're at a time where, like, if you just, like, study things, like I said, and you you get the best time to make side money. You can make money. Money's not the problem, bro. It's, it's finding something you feel passionate about, right? Yeah. I was talking – I actually just made a clip on my Instagram from this episode I did. And I was, I was saying, I was, like, people, like, shy away from their creativity so easy. Like, people's, like – they'll be, like, drawing and doodling. And it'll be a beautiful art. and But they, they don't ever, like – feed that sense of them you know and it's yeah. like that's your body wanting something wanting to be more creative and i feel like a lot of the problems we're seeing today where people are arguing on twitter about this that the other trump biden whatever it would go mm-hmm. away if people had something deep they were passionate about yeah you know i, I mean, mean and i feel like even like in middle school in middle school elementary school high school they kind of discourage stuff like this and i mean i always have this Okay, little side story. It's the first day of sophomore year biology, and our teacher doesn't even say hello. She says, for those of you that want to be astronauts or marine biologists, forget it. It's never going to happen. That's a direct quote. And then five years later, she quit and she works for NASA. So take that as you will. <laughs> Whatever. That is, a, that is very a lot. Yeah, but... I think it's sad that like a lot of the teachers we have growing up are like the meanest people that ever existed. Do you want to hear some, do you want to hear something like super fucked up? I, oh man, I've never said this on this podcast. That's crazy. (laughs) I was in seventh grade. Okay. Okay. Well, this is a fucked up story. All right. I was in seventh grade and I had a teacher named Mr. Friedman. Pretty sure he was gay. That that's not the point of the story. Um, uh, there was another teacher named Miss Dewey and she was the other seventh grade teacher. And then there was another one named Miss Humphreys. And Miss Humphreys was a very, very overweight, mean lady. Okay. okay. And I've, very, I've been very eccentric my whole life. I've been very loud and talkative and I've mellowed out a lot, but I can see how young Colin was annoying to teachers, right? I just wanted okay. to do things and talk, right? And I didn't think that reading the Whatever we read, what was West Side Story really mattered to me. Whatever. But it does. Okay. Yes. It, just it, kidding. Carry on. Like seventh grade Colin. You know, seventh grade yeah. dude just wants to play basketball, right? Um, yeah. So, okay. Mr. Freeman was a great teacher, dude. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think if this was reading, there's like advanced, you know, and then regular. Mm-hmm. I was in advanced my whole life, but I think I was in it, like just regular because I signed up for it and I was just like, whatever. This was seventh grade, I think. Yeah, it was seventh grade. And I just like, what, whatever. I mean, in regular. And then there was like the, the one below regular, you okay. know? And so Miss Dewey taught advanced, right? And there was a joke because Miss Dewey was a very attractive lady. She was young. She was probably low 30s, maybe high 20s. And she was very attractive. And so okay. young boys, you know, wanted to do young boys things. Mm-hmm. It comes out. The principal comes into her office and arrests her in the middle of class because she had been sleeping with a student. <gasps> yeah. And it comes out, the story comes out and it was her and her husband were sleeping with a, with a girl student. And now the girl oh was my like, God. I think the girl was like in 11th grade now. And, but she had done it for like, from like sixth grade to like 11th grade. And now the girl came out about it and was like, this was fucked up. So they arrested the teacher and then fi- finally everyone watched the news and they figured out 
But listen to this bullshit. This is how they addressed it. They took mm-hmm. my good teacher away and gave it to her students. And then I had Miss Humphrey as my teacher. And she was just this mean, fat lady. She hated me. That's what you took out of that situation? I got stuck with this stupid teacher. <laughs> well, I mean, in seventh grade, in seventh grade I, mean, I didn't know it was Dewey. And I mean, it was obviously a big deal, right? And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, in my mind, I had a great teacher who was like teaching us everything. And then- yeah. Just, and then she's gone. These, these ladies, these ladies sleeping with the students, and so they take her away, and they give me, they take my teacher away, and they give me this fat old lady, dude. Her class, I feel like she used to throw like pieces of like airplanes <gasps> at people, yeah. and I had detention one time in her class. I don't know why, but I had to like, I had to tape, like I had to put tape on my hands like this, mm-hmm. and go around on my hands and knees and pick up tape. What? Yeah, it was fucked up. It was, it was, it was yeah. fucked up, but. Yeah, dude, it was, yeah, like, isn't that crazy? That happened. That's horrible. Yeah. And, 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 but back to what I was off my tangent. I feel like it's so shitty that, like, most of, like, our teachers, like, or a lot of our teachers who especially, like, like, underprivileged kids get are, like, just, like, mean people who hate their lives. Yeah. And my mom, my mom is an English teacher, and she, I mean, she's wonderful at her job, but I think she's just kind of... A lot, and I'm not saying this is her, but a lot of teachers are just falling out of love with the profession mm-hmm. because the kids are just mean now. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're just freaking savages. Well, and I, oh. no, finish what you were saying. No, I mean, I was going to go on another little tangent. Go on. I, oh, I would have dreamed to one day be able to complain about this woman on a podcast. This is a special day. But I, a lot of people think they can't do marine biology because they're horrible at math. I am horrible, like just the worst you've ever seen. And I'm doing, I like, I could be doing better, but whatever. So it's the sixth grade math class. And this woman, oh, she, she would make you stand up until you magically got like the correct math answer, which never happens. So you just stand there. And she, she was also a fair sized lady. And she would always sit on this like yoga ball and like bounce up and down on it. And one day, this kid put like a massive tack underneath of it. So she finished yelling at our class and then she sat down on it and it just exploded. And it was just, oh, it was, the whole school came together in unity. And it was just, it was a beautiful moment, honestly. But mm, that's the whole story. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> that's a good story. I, now, that I, now that I think about it, I have some crazy stories from middle school when i was in sixth grade i was in this math class and we had this little indian teacher her name was mrs onstead i think onstead or onstead nice lady but she didn't really care she uh but listen to this so we had a sub one day and this guy was probably my age he's probably 22 he didn't like he was like he did not care he was just sitting there we used to play quarters in that class you know what quarters is God. yes (laughs) yeah like we used to do that and this one time this is a digression my my friend got he got hit in and he was gushing blood. No one did anything because no one cared. Oh. But listen to this, okay? <laughs> I'm sitting in class, and this chick behind me, her name was Sarah. I remember her name was Sarah. Okay. She turned around in the middle of class and full on stabbed me in the back with a pencil. I'm talking like full on shit oh. in the back. Like I had a hole in my back. I was bleeding. Oh my gosh. I went to the I went to the front of the office. I went to the front. This is crazy. I cannot believe this happened to me. I went to the front and I was like, I just got stabbed to this sub guy who was probably 22. I was like, I just got stabbed in the back with a pencil. And he's like, I can't do anything for you. Sorry about that. And so I went to the bathroom and I was fine. But like, yeah, I got stabbed in the middle of class and no one did anything about me. Oh, that is unfortunate. It goes to show you what happened. Like another story, another crazy story about sixth grade. In the middle of computers class, a full-on fist fight tackling session into desk brought out between these two kids in my class. And our teacher was so old. Did you take computers? Yeah. She was walking around like going to everyone's computers. And these guys were full on fighting. <laughs> couldn't hear them. And they fought for like 15 minutes. They were all bloody. Yeah, I did not go to the greatest school if you can. Wow. Yeah, my life. Ours. Oh, okay, I got one more. And then we're going to yeah. talk about real things. Okay. Also, sixth grade. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if this was a rumor. I think it's true. Our sixth grade building, everybody saw, thought it used to be a prison. And I'm pretty sure that's right. But I was a little band geek, as you could probably guess. And I was sitting in my little saxophone practicing circle. 
And this girl, she was insane. This woman, her girl, was crazy. But she hated this kid, Brendan, next to us. And one day, she took the end of her saxophone and just starts beating him in the head with it. And we all did that, enjoy that person sometimes. And it was just, oh, it was great. Our teacher had no idea what to do. It went on for a very long time. It was great. Middle school is a is a is a great time for young young lives. The they, battlefield. It really. Oh is. my god. Yeah, it it, dude, kids are mean too, dude. You're not at your best in seventh and sixth grade. I definitely was, and I was awkward. No, I, was I just like, worshipped Glee, and that was like my entire personality trait. That was it. You know, they just came out and said that's where all the woke wokeness came from was Glee. Did you know that? Glee. Yeah, they said oh. like that's where like that's where like all this woke stuff started, and I was like, huh. Makes sense. Bro, I had three posters on my wall in the sixth grade. And it was Puck. You know what happened to Puck? Or do you? I do. Okay, there's that. There's Santana. And then there's, what's his face? What's his name in real life? Cole. But yeah. Dude, didn't like, three of them Who, died. Those are the three that died. <laughs> yeah, dude, I remember so that my guy favorite. Died. He died from an overdose, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then the and other then, one, obviously, she died, like, saving her baby, didn't she? Yeah, it was like she what put, a... this is what we think happened. She, like, her and her three-year-old were in the ocean, and she, like, had enough strength to shove him or her up on the boat, and then they think she just drowned. And then yeah. Puck was, he had child Puck. pornography, right? On his yeah, time. a lot of it, oh. but... I mean, honestly, like, that doesn't seem that far-fetched now that we all know what happened, in, like, with everybody in, like, these pedophile islands and stuff. Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah. It is terrifying. You know what pisses me off? I talk about this a lot. Is the fact that, like, nobody talks about that in politics. Like, it's, like, one of the biggest know. things that, like, existed and, like, mm-hmm. nobody talks about it. And now Prince Andrew – my friend Adam Cole, I just had him on not too long ago, but he was telling me that Prince, Princess Diana's death was linked – to epstein and that was basically our episode was like it got to that oh my (laughs) and i'm like no but then he was like dude prince andrew is prince andrew has always been linked to epstein she wanted to like come out and say that he was a pedophile and like and then she wound up dead and and i was like yeah but then when all the stuff came out and they removed all his titles do you know how many prince andrew like this week yeah yeah oh this week yeah it was this week Oh, they removed all his titles and everything. Oh my God! Was, no, I did not know that. Yeah, the Queen removed everything because he was a because he's a pedophile, basically. Because Jelaine Maxwell like said his name was there, and yeah. and now I'm like, all right, it's oh, she's still alive. alive. Oh my God! Yeah, dude. It, <laughs> and like now you think about it, it's like there's so many sick people at the top right now, and like nobody's talking <sighs> about it. I think that shit runs the world secretly, for sure. I mean, uh, that's why no one talks about it. I mean, oh my goodness. And I'm not going to pretend to know everything about it, but I just, oh, it terrifies me. Yeah. And, and, like, yeah, <sighs> and the fact like Epstein might have been a Mossad. Do you know what Mossad's are? No. It's like the uh, Israeli CIA intelligence officers. Oh, okay. So Ghislaine, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm leading you into conspiracy theories, but Ghislaine <laughs> Maxwell's uh, dad was a Mossad. And so they think he was too. And they think Israel had something to do with like the large sex trafficking where Epstein got his money in and stuff. Oh, God. Well. Off of this digression, what are, <laughs> what are some – this actually, this actually happens a lot. We get into some crazy really? shit. Really? Oh, my uh, gosh. This time. But like back to marine biology, what types of like problems do marine biologists like encounter? Like most marine biology in 2022, what's the biggest problems you guys face? I mean, I kind of already, this is kind of back to what I was talking about, but just if you're early career marine biologist, it's really, really hard right now, especially with COVID to get new jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's always plenty of internships available, but I mean, they're, they're super competitive and they don't pay anything. So, I mean, it really is not every, if you can't, I never want to say like you can't afford blah, blah, blah to do it, but it's, it can be really, really hard. So that's definitely the biggest issue we're facing. Um, but yeah, I mean, for any like undergraduates listening, I could provide helpful advice. I feel like that might be more helpful than me <laughs> complaining. But yeah, yeah, definitely, um, when I do the bio, I'll put your contact information, whatever you want to give. Like, oh, cool. 
that okay. you can reach out. Yeah, I think most, it, I think this isn't just like subject to marine biology. I think you could like go a lot of ways with this. With like, it seems as though graduate school is like the only option for a lot of like professions you know like for like scientific and math mathematicians and engineering you kind of have to go to grad school you know already and doctors and law school but it feels like bachelor's degree isn't what it used to be right Mm -hmm. and it costs so much money to go to school now yeah and and it doesn't seem like loans are going to get forgiven anytime soon so (laughs) no (laughs) i mean yeah bachelor's is the new high school degree unfortunately and i mean i feel like It totally, I mean, like you said earlier, there's so many different fields in marine biology, but if you want to get into more like the research aspect of it, I would say grad school was definitely the way to go. But it's, I mean, with these temporary jobs that I've tried, I could make a career out of a lot of them. I just, they're not necessarily what I want to do. Like, for example, I'm making 45 bucks an hour cleaning boats. I don't want to do that forever, but it's really fucking good money. So I don't know. There's, there's that. But. This kind of plays into like the disadvantages question I asked, but like what, like after you like graduated and had your degrees, what's mm-hmm. the biggest thing like the real world has disappointed? Like what's the biggest disappoint- disappointment about the real world being a marine biologist? Uh, you are not as, ugh. I I felt like I was in a really, really strong place at my university. Like I felt like I had a really good relationship with a lot of my professors. I knew a lot of the students really well. I was really involved. And I mean, it's just like how you think you're hot shit in high school and then you graduate and you're like, oh my God, there's 10,000 more of me. That was definitely the big thing for me. Like I felt like I was really, really prepared. And I mean, there's so many more people that are in the exact same boat as you. So if, ugh, just get involved for anybody listening for that reason, do as much as you possibly can in high school and in college because it is kind of too late once you graduate Mm -hmm. if you want to start making money. Have you gotten into any disagreements with fellow marine biologists about specific things about the ocean recently that you want to share? (laughs) Oh gosh, no, I can't say this because then they'll listen. No, I mean, for the most part, I just like, how do I phrase this? What's the biggest disagreement you've had with people? Mm. I mean, some people just, like, they're in the field and they don't actually really know what they're doing. Like, they're kind of in it just because they like it and they don't, they'll just talk a lot of BS and, I don't know, that's dangerous because then people, like, hear you're a marine biologist and then they listen to you and then they're stupid too. And that's unfortunate. Um, But I haven't gotten into any big, like, Mm -hmm. one-on-one disagreements with anybody. So I'm not saying that I have, like, some extra knowledge on like politics and stuff but like my mm-hmm. my, my degree is in so politics yes, and government and then my yeah. and then my my minor's philosophy but like that's like the one field where if you're in a disagreement with someone who has no knowledge on the subject they think they're more right than you and you're just like i'm literally uh, telling you things yeah that is like fact like i'm telling I i'm not saying i could never do oh my gosh i would go crazy yeah i wouldn't study i would flip it and i would study like half politics and then i would ma- major in philosophy instead of okay. in philosophy and ma- because philosophy just makes you think better and it's also like most of the time i took philosophy of science and the you know, okay. time was like me the professor and a couple other people who were like more talkative just like having really high philosophical questions about science and then mm-hmm. if but we don't know anything. We're all idiots on this planet. That's like all philosophy is. It's like yeah. really, really in-depth conversations. And then by the end, you're like, well, I don't know anything. And now I'm yeah. stupid and I'm the dumbest person in this room. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, and, and what it makes me death. studying politics and then studying philosophy, what it makes me see is like how ridiculous politicians are and how they like literally just say the dumbest things and they argue mm-hmm. against straw men and really no one's out – like they're really just all out for the betterment of themselves and no one really cares about people yeah. as, like they say they do some people do i feel like some people in leadership positions like in the senate and stuff actually care about making mm-hmm. a difference but those oh, people are what are you gonna say sorry i feel like oh my goodness and i can't pretend like i said earlier to know anything not anything but like a ton about politics i feel like there should absolutely have to be like a conservationist in senate or like an ecologist Mm -hmm. just someone because i mean they don't 
there's nobody there. So, I mean, I feel like the people that have studied it all their lives need to be the people helping at least to make those decisions. Did you see the movie Don't Look Up? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Did you like it? Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I, I, I liked it for the sole reason that I think it was exactly what would happen if something like that happened. I totally like, agree. Yep. Um, and now it's a little more like, like making it like a, a comet was a little more like um, exaggerate, which I thought was like fun because it was a movie. Because mm -hmm. like, I feel like if it was like an asteroid, a lot there would be at least one media side that would be like, because they run on fear, right? So they'd be like, you're mm -hmm. all going to die, right? Um, but like uh, watching it and watching it in today's time, you're like, yeah, this is kind of oh where we're at, right? This is kinda of where of course at. I'm for the jobs the meteor is gonna create. <laughs> like, oh my god, that was the best part. But even uh, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, mm -hmm. yeah, he posted on a uh, Twitter, he was like, This is not a comedy, this is a documentary. And I was like, Yeah. That made me really happy. Um it, it was it was like me and my girlfriend watched it and I was not expecting it to be it was funny it was funny yeah like, so like it's exactly what I thought would happen that everyone would be divided there'd be sides mm -hmm. the politicians would just care about the money and the billionaires and and what the billionaires wanted to do and then the there would be like half the people who were like dude it's literally a comment right there and yeah like, don't nah. look up yeah I oh, I loved it yeah yeah it was I, I couldn't believe that they made it because they were kind of doofing the politicians. And I feel like a lot of Hollywood is like not allowed to do that. You know, like they, they, mm. they kind of are, but like with like big names, like it's usually not like Leonardo DiCaprio doing it. I yeah. Mean, he well, he's a huge environmentalist. He is. He is. Yeah. Um, it was a good movie, dude. I'm glad you yeah. saw it. I, anyone <laughs> out? I'm sorry if I, we didn't really spoil anything, but if anyone's listening right now and hasn't, yeah, seen we it, didn't spoil it. Yeah, go watch. It's a movie: Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Jonah Hill, Meryl Streep. Uh, what's what's his name, dude? Um, oh, uh, Timothy. Good yeah, old Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet. Yeah, the dude from Tyler Perry. Um, yeah. So it's all these oh, guys. Oh, what's your face? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. I was just going to say, it's all <laughs> these guys. And the, the, prep, the premise of the movie is that there's a comet coming to Earth. And the scientists that work at Michigan State find out. And they try to tell the politicians and the media. And they just kind of like are like more about like this relationship in, in the rap community. And, they're, and they're, the media doesn't care. And then the politicians just care about the money. It's good. You should watch it. Didn't spoil anything. Mm-mm. Well, this was fun. Do you want to finish <laughs> on anything? Do you want to finish on any uh, any crazy ocean facts or anything about you? Oh, goodness. Way to put me on the spot. If you want to learn about marine biology and invasive species, follow me on TikTok at Marine Biologist Mel. And I will put all your social media or your TikTok and then oh, whatever cool. contact in okay. the bio. Um, but yeah, this was fun. Don't feel like the last... 20 minutes that always happens every single time do <laughs> Great. not feel wouldn't change a thing because like us ranting about me getting stabbed in high school and your high <laughs> or middle school and your middle school that's exactly exactly what i wanted so thank you again okay. this was a lot of, of fun course. sweet well thank you so much for having me i love yes, talking to you definitely um here let me just